Hello again everyone, how are you? Welcome back to episode 4 of my nostalgia trip, my TL01 build. Uh, just to recap, this is the car I had years and years and years and years ago. It was my first hobby grade RC, um, which is sold many moons ago. And then I saw this exact one, brand new, in box in America and I had to have it. And that's why I've been doing this nostalgia series. Uh, now, some of you might be wondering why and where I'll say that again, why there's not been lots of bashing videos lately and where they've all gone. Now, the thing is, you might be aware, I'm staying at my parents' house for a few days, dinner away to a funeral in Ireland, so I'm looking after the house and the dog. Uh, I did, I could, obviously couldn't bring my whole RC collection, but I did bring my, uh, I bought this for filming and I, I brought my uh, FTX Outlaw uh, also to do some bashing, but the, 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 the purpose was it and the plan was for me to take the Outlaw and go bashing and film it for you guys. Um, now you might have seen the Outlaw video I did last with Matthew and it was, um, here's Outlaw and it was uh, fitting this nice blue uh, aluminium chassis um, so it was all fixed and ready to go and you saw it, you saw it tested and working um, however there has been a bit of a snag since then um, you can probably see here <laughs> the back end is no longer attached um, I took it out on the street yesterday um, a friend, friend of mine was over, we were going to, you know, get some filming or whatever. Um, what happened was, this, I think one of, I can't remember which tyre it was, I'll need to double check it, it's this one here. This, this front tyre started ballooning off the rim, it's, the glues come unstuck, it started really vibrating at high speed. So I had no, no choice but to put the brakes on, slam the anchors on, because this, this, this was going to come flying off and cause a huge accident. And what happened is, the front dipped and it went over. And it slammed the back wheels into the ground at the cement at full chat and it's just snapped the arms clean off. So I've ordered new arms. So that's why I cannot do any bashing videos right now. And therefore, we're cracking on the TL01. But to be honest with you, I wanted to do this anyway. Uh, I really wanted to crack on with this and finish this off. Now, we are on part 10, which is fitting the motor. Here is the standard motor. It is a so what they call the silver can 540 27 turn Johnson motor. Now it is, uh, it couldn't, couldn't pull the skin of rice pudding this thing. It's very weak. Um, and I, I had this in my original car and I thought it felt it was good. I felt it was fine. But bear in mind I was a young boy and any hobby grade RC that you have to build, any Tamiya or whatever, or any Kyosho or anything like that, was always much faster than the hobby grade stuff that you were used to as a kid. So. This did seem like, oh wow, look at this thing go, but it was just this motor. Um, but for this car, for this build, I'm going to use the GT tuned motor, um, which is, I think is a, a, a 25, I'm going to say it's 25, it says there, 25 turn motor. So, these are quite nice actually, I'll just open this up, I've got the camera here. It's a nice little motor, it feels really good, nice high quality, you can see it's rebuildable, you can change the brushes here. You know, take the top off, expose the uh, armature, skim the commutator, and then reassemble it with new brushes, etc. The problem with these, this is actually Japanese made, so very, very, very good quality. People say it's good quality, and people say it's quite a good, strong motor. Just testing magnet strength here. Uh, certainly, certainly stronger magnets. You can feel the stronger magnets than this one. Uh, but the problem is, uh, these ones are massively overpriced. Now, I paid, I think I paid somewhere in the region of late 20s to 30 pounds, maybe, for this. But you can quite often see them on eBay approaching, approaching 50 pounds, you know, 45, 46 pounds for a 25 ton brush motor. It's, it is overpriced, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's a good motor, it's a quality item, which is why it's priced that way, but it is a bit overpriced. You can get brush motors 17 ton and lower for a tenner nowadays, so yeah, but they're obviously Chinese made, this is Japanese made uh, by Tamiya themselves, so it is a bit different, but that's the motor I'm going to be using, put that away, don't do that, but we'll be using the hardware for mounting it, which came with the kit, and here we are here, so for this part of the build, we need the MA1, two of those, here they are here, and they're just falling straight out, two of them, 
MA4, one of. I think I've only got one left now in this bag anyway, so there it is. MA1. Now, this is where it says you need to use the pinion gear, the 19 turn pinion gear. This is it here. Now, this is quite a nice looking pinion gear. It's quite shiny and looks all well machined and stuff, but they're very soft. These things are made of cheese. Um, yeah, very common for a Tamiya pinion gear, even though it's alloy or aluminium. I'm not sure, I think it's alloy. Um, to wear out quicker than the plastic spur that it's running against. They are that soft. So I'm not using this 19 turn pinion. Uh, I am using a RW Racing 19 turn pinion. Now this is, there it is there. In case you're looking for the part number for it, it's RW0600. Now that's important because you cannot use a 48 pitch pinion on these Tamiyas. This is mod point six, which looks like a 48, uh, 48 pinion. 48 pitch pinion up close. It does look like one. And um, if you run them against each other, like uh, where's the Tamiya one like this, if you run them like that, they will mesh to a point and they will run, but they won't mesh nicely and they will very quickly strip out. So make sure you get a mod point six. You can get them in America, you can get them uh, from Robinson Racing, and then over here in the UK, you get them from RW Racing. And they're hardened steel, I believe. This is certainly steel, yes. So uh, these won't wear out. Um, this came with a, where have I put it? I wonder if it's fallen out. It might have fallen out. I was gonna say this comes with a grub screw, uh, but I have misplaced it. So this has started off well. <laughs> right, where is this grub screw? Let's find it. Aha! Uh grub screw, a little black one. Right, there it is. So if you can see it, there we go. So. I will use that grub screw and this pinion. Uh, it says to remove the tubing from the motor shaft. Obviously, there's no tubing in this one. Uh, we're going to use this big motor plate. That's a bit of a grandiose word for a piece of cardboard. I think it's a piece of cardboard. It might not be. I might not be giving it enough credit. It could be some sort of high. No, it's cardboard. It's cardboard. So, where's the little cardboard? I mean, the motor plate. There's the cardboard, I mean, more plate. Um, that's just falling straight off again. Right, it's always, I've said this before, it's always the red one. It's always the red one. So, motor plate. Uh, pinion. The pinion will stop the motor plate coming off for the first while anyway. And you've got to put the pinion on backwards, so that way rather than that way. Now, the standard kit does come with two grub screws. They're in, uh, do, 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 do. I saw them. I saw them in this bag, in the, in the bearing bag or the, the bushing bag. Yeah, there's two grub screws in there. I won't use them. Uh, again, this is not sacrilege for the purists, the Tamiya purists, because you do get the Tamiya purists, and fair enough. Uh, but nothing I'm doing here is um, irreversible. Nothing's permanent. You can fit the standard Tamiya motor. But that's one of the reasons I went for a Tamiya GT tuned, is to keep it all Tamiya. I could have went for any other brand, but no, I decided to go for Tamiya. Um, and it will keep the characteristic of this car relatively intact, because this isn't supposed to be a speed demon, it's not supposed to be a, you know, team associated or Schumacher racing car. It's the Tamiya, basic Tamiya for bashing around. It's not even Tamiya's racing division TRF, it's not even that. Just a, a basic classic Tamiya. Now, what, what's annoying is you can't screw that flat until it, because this is wobbling around. But anyway, again, it says to put some grease in there. Not going to need to because I don't. You probably can't see in this here, but in this part, it's full of grease on the spur. Absolutely full of grease. So. And I, I wish I'd known that before because I'm, I'm not sure how well this is going to seal off now. But. Uh, Anyway, that's just how it is. So coming in from this side of the chassis, this side, it should all slot in. Yep, that seems to be good. And what you need now is a cover. So, put that way, put the chassis there, we're for you guys. Beside this part, which is the cover for the gears, there's another cover here, part B3, which is what this screw is used on. So part B3, where are you? This is the C tree, not that one. 
this is the bee tree and that's part three right there okay so let's get this thing removed and the inevitable burr so look yeah there's a little bit of burr on there i what my burr clipper offers which is the technical term I mean there's still gaps there though, I don't like that very much. Because if I seal this, this is for sealing there, which doesn't seal it greatly on its own to be honest anyway. Because oh no it does, it's got a it's got a little uh, flange on it, okay fair enough. So that's that there, that's fine. But swap with the other two or the other four screw holes. One, two, three, four, what about them? They're still exposed. There's lots of great gears and uh, gears and grease in there, so what happens at that point? Will it eventually get covered? I don't know, we'll have to find out. It's been that long since I've even set my eyes on a complete TL01. I just don't know. Just do not know. Right, anyway. Let's get this screwed down. Now, I'm going to deviate from the instructions a little bit now. Because at this point it says, you know, install your radio system, install your speed control and your receiver. And I'm not going to do that. Um, um, I like installing my electrics on a completed rolling chassis. Um, I also didn't bring the electrics for that exact reason. So, skipping part, what part is that? Part 11. So we're now on to part 12. And it says here, the B steel bag. I use from parts 12 to 26. Now I haven't opened that bag yet. I have left over from the old one, the two screws, which were part of the steering the arms here but i use the uh, gpm parts so they've they're redundant don't need them all of the they're all spilling everywhere all of the plastic bushings redundant don't need them and there are two drop screws in there redundant but i don't know what this little screw is for this little gold one i haven't used that yet and that's in the same bag well maybe that might get revealed to us in good time. So for this stage let's get this bag. Perhaps B. It's got all the springs and lots of heavy bits in it. Lovely. Drive shafts etc. Out drives. Okay let's open this up. There's bags within that bag, obviously. It's had little body clips. Springs. How soft? How soft are the springs, actually? I mean, I'm not using the friction dampers, which come with this. I'm using a proper off of it. I hate even springs do that. You ever, you ever have that when the springs are? Thank you. Right. No, they're yeah, they're super soft. That's okay. Not going to be using them, but even if. Of whatever, like I'm not using it. Oh, how many of these do you have? One of them. I mean, I gave one away yesterday to someone because I just uh, so many. Right, where do we start? We're attaching the, the rear arms now, that's cool. Okay, so this is the rear end here touching the rear suspension arms. So for the hardware we need two MA2s, step screws. Now where are the step screws? I don't think they're in here. No they're not, that's all drivetrain stuff. Are they in here? I would imagine so. It looks like them. So let's open this up. I'll try and open it just to one end and not get them everywhere. I think that's Come on, come on. I think that's these here. Is that the right one? Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, two of those. There's another step screw. Two. Please stop bending, Paige. Please don't. I wonder if I can. I can the hide the instructions a little bit though. Uh, four MA4s. We're back to our old friends, the MA4s again. Now tell me, it's interesting, tell me I've got the reputation for having utterly fantastic instruction manuals. That's one of the main selling points when people say, what should you get for a first car? A lot of people say tell me is. 
And some people argue against it and say you don't get that much for your money with a Tamiya. For example, a TTO2 will cost you, what, 115, 120 pounds maybe, depending on the spec, and it'll still have, you know, it'll still have uh, plastic bushings, and most often it still has um, friction shocks and not oil filled. So people go, oh, it's not great for a first car, you know, you're not getting a lot of spec for money. People go, yeah, but you learn a lot about it and stuff, and they have fantastic instructions. The instructions on this, are fine, they're okay, but they're not amazing. I've seen better, and I mean, I've seen better from Tamiya, to be honest, things have moved on since this was the case, but I wonder if that's now just part of their reputation, because I, I don't I don't know. I think things have superseded this sort of thing since then. But anyway, that's, that's you know, just a slight observation there. Maybe Tamiya are still the best, but they are slightly better than this now. I think people have caught up, though, if I'm honest. But what we need is C... 15 and C14. Looks like we need a... Uh... Oh, right, so that's weird. So the, the, the lower wishbones are literally two parts joined together. Huh. All right, fair enough. But yeah, fine, good. Um, and we need C4, two of. Here's the C trees, I think. Are these the C trees? These are the C trees. There's 14 and 15 on both of them. Yeah, so these are, like I said before, these are absolutely mirrored. Now I wonder why uh, these are, you know, separate and then you just have to put them together. Is it a moulding thing? Is that why? I don't know. It's slightly strange anyway. But there we are. They fit together like that. And you simply just screw them. So it's, it's, that's not, it's odd. It's just... It's a bit strange, but anyway. Alright, that's the uh, suspension arms. Odd looking things, really are, but you know, if they do the job. Now, what we want to do is use these big screw pins through there into the chassis. So, there and there. And then literally that. So it's only secured at one end, then you see. That slides through freely, then it the threaded, it's threaded at that side, and then it bites into this bit. So that's what we'll do. It's really not easy to keep this all on camera. I hope you appreciate it, this guys. Really hope you appreciate this. You know what? Screw it. You can stop appreciating it now. Tight up much better like this. I'm predicting. Lots of slop is what I'm predicting. Not just in this part here, but overall, yeah, it's got a fair amount of slop. It's not, it's not too bad actually, to be honest. But maybe if I can tighten that one up slightly more, maybe I'll eliminate it or certainly help. What we want are these two on the top arms, but we're not using these top arms. So these are the arms here. They go there and there like that. But we're again, we're using the GPM kit, so we probably won't even need these two screws. What I need to do is find the corresponding parts in the GPM kit. Where's the GPM kit? Oh, it's here. Right, here we are here. And... Let me find the right lens. Slightly longer, but it is adjustable. Don't think of these ones. No, they're way shorter. And this is, there's only one of this. I don't know what this one's for yet. So, we're using these parts from the GPM kit, these two. I don't think they can shorten much more. But, anyway. Now, they go through these two screw holes. There. These two big screw holes. And we need to find the right hardware, because again, there's no instructions. For these, we need to find the right stuff here. I don't think we use these. No, we don't. Definitely not. So we use something else. Is that? Ah, okay. And they come with. Hmm. I'm guessing the top hats. No, we don't know what I actually call these. I always call them top hats. The top hats go in there, I'm guessing. That fits out the gap. Yes, it does. Very nicely. That's a perfect fit. So, we use the two top hats 
in the mounting holes like that. That makes them narrow enough that we can use these screws. Are they long enough? Yes, they are. Like that, and then a nut on the other side. That's that's exactly what we need to do here. Put that through there. Is it definitely screwing on there? Yeah, it screws from the back. So. GPM bar on. If I want to go through it. Stop fighting me. There we go. And a nut there. Comes with the nuts, of course. The GPM kit comes with everything you need apart from when I built the front. It didn't come with, what did it not come with again? Oh yeah, the, the ball stud things. Okay, so need to find the right I think it's a blue one for that. Another rule I have in my toolbox, if it's not the red one, it's usually the blue one. So it's the blue one this time. Can I use the standard Tamiya wheel nut wrench, the wheel nut spanner? Where is it? There it is there. Can I use that on the back of this nut? Do I have access? Ooh, sort of. The answer is sort of, not really. But I do have a Tamiya Did have a Tamiya? Ah. I do, but not here, have a Tamiya turnbuckle wrench. So, this should fit. It's Tamiya after all. Although well, this is obviously GPM, but it's for Tamiya. How many times can I say Tamiya? Right. Fine. And these screws are just long enough to engage the uh, nylock on that side. So basically what it is, long screw through the middle, top hat thing, there's the the uh, shock tower or whatever you want to call it, I suppose it is the shock tower, sort of. It's actually part of the chassis. And then there's a link and then the nut. And I just need to do the same on the opposite side. Okay, I've hit a bit of a snag actually. Uh, a bit of poor uh, design from GPM there unfortunately. So what happens is to try and mimic this side obviously you've got the screw going through and you've got the, the what we're going to call the shock tower and then the actual link which is there and then you've got the nut. But on this side you can't physically do that because this part of the casing fills it. There's no way of getting all of that and then you can get all that through but you can't get the nut over it. I'll show you what I mean. If I uh, that's the wrong screw, that's the right screw. If I put the top hat, what do you want to call it, the spacer, through there, then the screw, so that's through there. Then you have the link, goes, so I've got to push the screw back a little bit to get the link through. There's the link through. Actually, that's a, that's a shorter screw, but it doesn't make any difference here. I can't get that nut over there at all. It won't fit. It literally won't fit. There's not enough clearance there. So I've had to raid my dad's workshop and steal a very narrow M3 nut. I think it's an M3. So this kit, this GPM kit, has been designed for the TL01. This is a TL01 part listing for this car. And it doesn't actually fit the TL01. Most of it does, but this part doesn't. And I've not, not used it all yet, so there might be other issues. I hope there's not. It shouldn't be, but there shouldn't have been this in the first place. So that's a bit disappointing from GPM. Um, what I need to do now is put, I hope I can get get away with this, I think I should. If I put, I'm trying to keep this on the camera, it's not easy. If I put this through like that, so you can see there, there's no way. If I hold that in with my finger, where's that other nut? There it is. There's no way of getting that in there. Even if I push that screw back, it won't fit. It just will not fit. So I've got this very narrow silver one, stainless steel one from my dad's workshop that should again very tight it's not going to be easy but it should come on obviously this is not a nylock nut if we get tight enough there you go it's on right that's fine that now fits see so it means I've got well unfortunately I've got it asymmetrical it's not the same one side as it is in the other um, which is a shame, it's not a disaster, it's a shame, it'll function the same, but uh, unfortunately it's just, 
you know, because GPM stuff's quite well made, quite expensive, it has a good name to it, and this kit is for the TL01, it is disappointing to find that it actually that bit doesn't fit. But anyway, we've, we've, we've rectified it, so it's all now working. So we don't need these arms, we don't need uh, this or this screw, I'll clean that up for you. Uh, we don't need this nut, this is the GPM stuff, we'll just put it aside at the moment. Okay, so that is the rear, top and bottom arms on. And now we need the, uh, the out drives. Are they calling it out drives? They call them, they're calling them gearbox joints, but they're out drives. So, we need two of these uh, rubber donuts, rubber o-rings, and we need MB10 and MB11. Oh, so they're actually not... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, because that one's got a thing through it. Okay, that one's got a shaft through it. That makes sense. They're not symmetrical. That looks correct. They've got different sizes. No, they don't do it the same sizes. That's fine. I was going to say, they've got different size splines there, but they're the same. Is there markings on this? I don't think there will be. No, they're not. But you can quite clearly see they are the right things. So... The O-rings go in the end there, the drive shaft, so make sure they're uh, kept in. Jiggery cobery, that was too thick. There we go, let's go spin right. That's one. Gearbox joint. Oh, that one is picking up a fight. Get it in. Right, they're in. So on the right side of the chassis goes the longer one, we'll do that. Right through right through there and this. This is what this is what I didn't like. This the, the, the diff is free floating, so this is what aligns it. This is what keeps it from moving around like this when it's in the uh, in the car and on their load. There they are. I mean I suppose if it's that's if that's got very little tolerance very fine tolerances then it that actually feels quite good. I was going to say, because you can imagine the diff is free floating so inside the car it can move around like this, but the, the tolerances on these outdrives, these uh, gearbox joints are quite fine so actually once they're in it's nice and snug so that's quite good. But again what stops them from expanding outwards on the load? Is it just the length of the drive shafts hugging them in? Is that all it is? Is it just, we'll find out I suppose. I say that a lot, but we will. Now we need two bushings, but we're not using them. Of course, we're using the bearings. Where are the bearings? Where are the bearings? Oh, there are the bearings. A couple of bearings. I like how the bearings are all one size in this kit. So you can muck around with that. That's quite good. Keep it nice and simple. Whoop. There are the two bearings we need. The other wheel axles, the other drives. One, two, it looks like little spares. These ones have pins to them, you see. That's them. And two drive shafts. MD13, these are unusual looking drive shafts. Now, are all four of them the same length? I'll we'll take three. Have a look. They look the same. Yeah, they're all the same. So I just need to take two of them randomly, that's fine. Okay, rear upright, ah! B4, two B4s, but we don't need to use the B4s. These are these, are these here, two of these, but we're not going to use them because I bought the toe-in rear uprights because I think these have zero toe-in as standard and the back of the car isn't entirely planted. Some people say that it's ill handling and it needs to it starts to try and swap ends a little bit. And to rectify that, you can use these hop up options. These are for uh, these are uh, let's see the part number five three three four five. That's the part number five three three four five. Time their parts. Um, toe in rear upright. I think they've got two degrees of toe. I think might be one. I think it's two. And I'm going to use the hexes that come with these ones as well. But these will make the car handle slightly better and they are straight fit onto this car, unlike GPM parts. 
No, uh, let's not go into that. Right. Fine. So, uh, nice. Quick chunky. Goes that way. Right, left, because they've got letters on them there. They should fit in there. They do. Good. The first thing we need to do is put the drive shaft in it apparently. Again, saying please grease up. Well, the gearbox is nice and greased. I'm not putting grease in these. These are very much exposed to the elements. That's just a terrible idea. So, there's always one bearing at the back each side. Well, I'm assuming it'll be bearing in the front as well when we get there. Yes, it will be. So, bearing in. There we are. Yeah, there's definitely going to be bearing in that side. There's the right one. Bearing in, line up, line up, there we go, there's the left. Okay, and then, <laughs> okay, weird. Um, these are just mold lines that need chopped off. All right, I mean, I thought they looked odd, but I'll, okay, everybody else seems to manage to make them without funny things you gotta snip off, but. Right, right, whatever. Yeah, I'll do it untold, no problem. Snip these off. Odd, really, it's weird. Right, let's take the left one, which is this one. Just double check, where's, where's the letters? Yep, left one. Through there. Is, and screw that up. No, not screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. I want to make a good job of it. You get what I'm saying though. You know what I mean. Right. And then the dry shaft sits in there. And in there. Aha, see now this is where the MA2 is supposed to go through that part. See, straight through there. But we will Reluctantly, go to GPM. Wow. Oh dear. Anyway, that's fine. That's no problem. If you're wondering why, you probably know already, but if you're wondering why I'm using the GPM parts, it's just because that allows me to get um, adjustable camber, which is what I'm going to go for. Going to set this car to have one degree camber all round. They might be set to that already, maybe one and a half, it depends on how it handles. Yeah, I just heard myself. How the time tail one handles. Anyway, got me. moving swiftly on. All right. So we've done this part, so we're on 16. We need to assemble the front arms the same way as we assembled the, the rear ones. So again, we're needing four MA4s. I'll move that right out of the way. Put the arms together, right? There we are, two completed two piece suspension arms for the front, like that, and that. You can see by the pictures down there. We need the MB3s for these. We've already done the MA4s to screw these together, and MA2s will probably not need it again because that's for putting the top arms on, and again, we're using the GPM stuff. So let's first of all put these arms on. Keep wanting to pick this up and you know up here, but uh, trying to keep up the camera for you guys as well. Ooh, don't there we go. Can I do it from this angle? Can you guys see? I'm sure you can see. In there, get in there. You pig of a thing, get in there. There we go. And the same with this one. Wow. I mean, I know there was a long suspension arm version of this released, but I mean, look at those. Look at them, they're tiny. It's got to be the short, is that the same, that can't be the same track width at the front as it is in the back. No, it's not. It's wider at the back. Sure it is. I mean, look at that. Is that the narrowest stance you've ever seen in your life? I mean, it could be that the front, could be that the front hubs in the front drive shaft, project the wheels out a little bit more, I'm assuming so, because otherwise this will definitely be wider. I mean, that is noticeably wider at the back, surely. Surely that is. Yeah, it looks like it. 
strange. Strange. It really is a weird chassis. I mean, building this, I'm enjoying the build, don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying the build. And it's fascinating to see how sort of older stuff gets put together, but it seems like it would take you more effort to design a car like this and then it would design them on more sort of everyday principles with, you know, equal length arms and, you know, twin belt system or, or, or TC, I know TC3 and everything is much newer, but makes it seems like a much easier construction and design having central drive shaft you know down the center with the, the anyway whatever 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 time they know what they're doing they always know what they're doing right gpm parts the only two remaining bits check the length c3 in the front arms there's c3 and then check against this in this camera that is the right part so we're using c3 and we're using the top so again we need to use the um, top hats. Put the top hats in there. One. I'll do one side at a time. Actually, start save myself from wrestling with this thing. And again, the arms are going behind the shock tower. I hope I don't get any fouling issues this time. I need a longer screw than that one. Longer screw. Tap that back in. Shouldn't get any furling issues. Plenty of clearance at the front, I think. Maybe that side, but we'll see. Then, not in the end. I'll try and let you guys see it. Come on, get on there. There we go. Just need to tighten this up and then repeat the other side. There we go. No fouling issues this time, plenty of clearance. So we've got the upper arms on, adjustable camber links. Obviously these, which is attached to the servo there on the other side, they give me toe, toe in or toe out, but I won't be running toe out. They give me toe adjustment. This is camber adjustment. So what do we do next? A couple more uh, rubber o-rings and the other drive shafts or out drives gearbox joints this is the front so we are putting the longer drive shaft as you can see in from this side out drive gearbox what is it called again gearbox gearbox joint and then that one goes on this side, like so. Again, that keeps the diff nice and secure. I'm liking how how much that's because I was really worried the gearbox would float around, the diff would float around inside the gearbox, but it seems okay. The, I mean, the slop in the steering and suspension is horrendous, but at least the gearbox itself doesn't have any slop. That's more important. And we're on to the next page. Ah, yes. Part 18, two bearings, MB1, four of, and two wheel axles. Two of the axles. So, uh, okay, look at that. They see the grease there. That's going to be right out in the hubs. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Cannot do that. But, what we can do is leave it to another day. Because this is going to be a very long video, and uh, I'd rather not rush it. So, what we'll do is next time we will do the hubs and the steering and the suspension. So, tune in for that. Thank you very much for watching again. My tea has gone cold again. I'm not even going to touch that. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.